If you want to maximize your results from training, then you need to keep it simple. It's very easy nowadays with social media like TikTok and Instagram to get caught in the rabbit hole of the most optimal exercise or the most optimal angle for this exercise. Or this exercise is rubbish, don't do it, this one is better. But to put it simply, the basics work. There's a reason that the basics will never go out of style. They've been around for hundreds of years and they will continue to be around for future years to come. So I'm gonna give you three basic concepts that you need to focus on. Stick with these and you're gonna make a ton of gains. So let's get into it. First point is basic exercise selection. When you're training, you wanna think of movement patterns. A concept I learned years ago from Paul Cech are the seven primal movement patterns. So basically, all of the ways our body is designed to move. And those are a bend or a hinge, squat, lunge, push, pull, twist, and gait. So basically walking. All of these movement patterns are gonna train all of your muscles from head to toe. Now when I say basic, I'm not talking about minimalist like only doing one exercise for a certain muscle, that minimalism mindset is gonna to lead to a underdeveloped physique, overuse injuries, and mental burnout from doing the same thing over and over again. When I refer to basic, I'm talking about the basic movement patterns. So for example, for the chest, it's a horizontal press, and there are many exercises you can do for the chest in a horizontal press, like a bench press, a dumbbell bench, dips, push-up, machine press. All of those exercises are a basic horizontal press. It's gonna work your chest, shoulders, and triceps. But more importantly, they all have different strength curves. So where the exercise is the hardest during the lift. For example, a dumbbell bench is the hardest at the bottom because it emphasizes the weighted stretch and it has an increased range of motion. Whereas the regular barbell bench it's harder around the mid range, so about halfway through the range of motion. That emphasizes the mechanical tension and allows you to apply the most weight to your chest, shoulders, and triceps. And the same goes for isolation movements. Take, for example, the upper arm. There's only two ways it can move by the elbow joint, flexion and extension. So you wanna pick one or two exercises for flexion and extension that you feel a decent mind-muscle connection with, spam them and get stronger over time. For anyone new to training, it's really that simple. And the second point is basic progressions. Adding weight and adding reps will always be the best forms of progressive overload. Other forms of progressive overload are great and they do work, but there is a time and a place for them. I'm pretty sure if you're watching my videos, you're new to training or you're in the early stages of training. So for you, the best way for you to go is focus on adding weight to the bar and adding reps to your sets. So don't worry about advanced periodization or percentage-based lifting. The time for that will come if you stay consistent. For now, just focus on adding weight and adding reps to your set for the next one, two, or even three years and your physique's gonna blow up right in front of you. On the same notion, don't rush your progression. A common thing that's told to beginners is to add five to 10 pounds to the bar every time you lift. Now, while that does work, and I've done that myself many a times, the big problem with that is eventually you will stall, and when you stall, it will be a hard stall. It'll be like you've just run into a wall and you can't get past it. So my advice would be just to slightly take a step back and add weight to the bar every one to two weeks compared to every session. So you really wanna milk and stretch out your progression over the long term. In terms of muscle hypertrophy, there's gonna be virtually no difference in how much muscle you've gained, whether you add weight to the bar every session or you add weight every week or every fortnight. There might be a tiny percentage more adding weight every session, but it's gonna be virtually zero. You're not gonna really notice any difference. So take your time, execute perfect form, and progress when you feel ready to progress. 
And my final point is keep your diet simple. You really want to dumb it down and think of calories in versus calories out with mostly whole foods. Don't get too caught up in macros. Just make sure that you're getting adequate protein and fats and you're getting clean carbohydrates like rice, pasta, potatoes, things like that. For optimizing health, that's where things start to get complicated. That's where the intricate details of what you eat and when you eat really start to matter. So your macro and your micronutrients play a large role if you're trying to be the healthiest version of yourself. But for general strength and aesthetics, just make sure you eat enough to support your training and recovery. You eat mostly clean foods, you have adequate water intake, and you have a variety of foods. If you approach it like that, then you're covered on all bases in terms of your diet. So that's all I have to say on that topic. Keep your training simple, basic exercises, basic progression schemes, and basic diet. If you follow those steps, then you're gonna make 90% of your gains without mentally taxing yourself and obsessing compulsively over tiny little factors that play a very, very small role in your gains. So with all that being said, try it out for yourself and see how you go from there. Until next time, peace.